Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GF GFS and ECMWF ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Metal 5 day precipitation and temperature. Now in yesterday's video we were looking at what was happening with the AO with it potentially going very negative again. We're still seeing hints of that of course uh, but it is very uncertain in the longer term. But one thing that is very um, sort of sure now which is firming up within the models is we are going into a much more west to northwesterly phase. Now we've had a lot of high pressure at the moment as you can see by the latest GFS we've got high pressure right at the top of the UK. That high pressure isn't really going anywhere. It's because the power of the polar vortex and the jet stream is going to push that high pressure to our south. But it's going to keep, keep trying to ridge northwards. Um, whether it's going to be successful in the long term, producing proper blocking, it's not going to happen in the next week or two. We're not seeing any hints of that. Perhaps towards sort of the middle of February, there is potential there if we do see the AO go negative, um, which means blocking patterns are more prevalent. But it's very much looking like it's going to bring ridges up which could send us into a sort of a northwesterly theme. And I have said repeatedly through this winter that northwesterly flows, especially in January, end of January, towards February, can be very cold. And we are seeing that on the latest run. So I'll take you through that in today's video. It is looking pretty chilly and unsettled. But if you have a look at the latest GFS, high pressure over the top of the UK, looking really quite pleasant today. Quite chilly as we still have some relatively cold air towards the surface, and there will be frosts here or there. But as we have a lot of cloud around today, it's only really going to be where that cloud breaks where we see the frosts. Now, if we do run through this latest GFS run, you can see we do slowly start to see low pressure trying to push in. First, just making its way through Scotland by the middle of next week. And then it starts to break its way through all areas towards Friday, Saturday time. You see high pressure is hanging on to the south, in, in, hanging on in the south, but rain and cloud will be pushing in from the west. Um, and it's really this low that we're watching um, around day ten. It's really spinning up out of northeast Canada. That's a nor'easter coming out of North America, and that's coming into the jet stream. And if we do have a look at the 850 HPA temperatures, real mild air in ahead of it bitterly cold air tucked in behind it and if we do run this on it's not a massive blocking pattern but as i said at the start of the video we can still see cold weather from these sort of northwest uh northwesterly flows and as i said because it's this high pressure trying to reach northwards and it's pushing that jet stream more to a northwest southeast alignment and what we do is we see bitterly cold air wrapping around that um low pressure system especially on its back edge and it could mean especially over Hills into northern England and even to low-lying areas, potentially in the south for a period of time, will have air capable of producing wintry weather. Now, because we're not seeing sustained blocking patterns, these sort of patterns uh, or these sort of weather type will not hang around for a long period of time. You can see this only lasts for 24, 48 hours before we see another milder set to push through. And then we go back into another colder polar maritime air mass. And then right towards 384 hours, you can see we're sort of oscillating between milder and colder sectors. Could be very snowy across the north, especially over high ground in Scotland. As we look at the GFS ensembles at the end of the video, Glasgow now has a quite a few snow spikes. Again, it's going to be hit and miss because it's going to depend on exact air masses, uh, dew points, stuff like that, which can be very marginal, especially from a North Atlantic flow. But there very much is a signal of colder weather coming. Not sustained, blocking, bitterly cold weather that I know a lot of people have been asking about and have been hoping for the last few weeks. But it's still quite a chilly pattern which could produce some quite lively conditions, maybe named storms within this, and maybe some wintriness, especially over northern hills. Very much more exciting and more going on than we've had recently. Now, if we have a look at the latest GM, we'll see that it does follow on very similar to the GFS. That's why I put pretty high confidence now. We're going to be seeing this westerly to northwesterly flow, pretty chilly conditions. And you can see very similar over the next few days with lower pressure trying to push in. And then we see that sort of northwesterly flow. And as we're towards day 10, you see that low that produced that, uh, it's going to produce that much cold weather at day 10 with really quite cold air wrapped in behind it, a real big mild sector ahead of it. And we'd be going into much colder weather behind it. So you can see oscillating between cold and milder sectors. Again, will be cold and snowy across the north um, and, and over higher ground, especially. To the south, it will be on and off. Some days will be sort of three or four degrees, maybe with wintry sleety showers. Other days will be nine, ten, eleven degrees with milder uh, westerly winds. So 
it's not a blocking sustain pattern. I'm not saying that it's going to be bitterly cold, but very much does look like it's going to be quite um, quite a lot of up and down with temperatures, quite a lot of precipitation around, um, quite lively conditions, potentially even stormy with this um, as well. So yeah, with these big temperature contrasts you can see in the North Atlantic, we're going to be seeing some very, very lively weather over the next couple of weeks, but we've still got high pressure to hang on for the next five days. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure over the top before we see low pressure starting to push through over the next 7 to 10 days. And then at day 10, you can see the Atlantic really starting up with low pressure running out of northeast Canada. Bitterly cold air wrapped in behind it and a big milder sector heading towards the UK. And um, we are seeing this well reflected on the GFS ensemble around day 10. Real big milder sector before we see a big drop off on the ensembles after that. But of course, this is in sort of the day, uh, the ten-day time frame, so it has got a lot of uncertainty with it. But it's not showing a massive blocked pattern, which are very uncertain at day ten. It is showing very much a westerly pattern, but quite an active jet stream with cold air digging in behind it. So I very much think this has got quite a high chance of coming off. Uh, again, I'm not guaranteeing any massively cold weather. I'm just saying that there is a chance here, a pretty decent chance, that we have some colder, chillier weather. Um, towards the start of February with potentially a lot of wintry showers around in the north and it's better than nothing that's one thing I must say it really is better than nothing um, but it's a lot more lively than we've had now the last couple of weeks have been really quite boring in sort of the weather sphere with a lot of high pressure mundane high pressure and I know a lot of people have enjoyed it but I know a lot of people at the same time would rather uh, some more exciting weather patterns to be happening now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF, which does show this sort of pattern shift very well. Now, you can see the high pressure all over the top, the big red, showing big um, anomalies for higher pressure. Now, if we run up to day seven, you can see all of the ensemble members have that high pressure retreating to the south, big blues and purples to our north. That's the polar vortex coming in from the west, and that will be um, the jet stream powering up. Now, as we shift towards day 10, you can see something very similar. High pressure out in the Atlantic, retrogressing out, trying to get towards Greenland, and we're starting to pull in a northwesterly wind. But as I said, those blocking patterns don't look likely over the next seven to ten days. So this isn't likely to be sustained, but it will be a brief north to northwesterly wind. And we can see that from the majority of the ensemble. You can see the ones on the right here, the 22, 43.1% are likely to be colder because that ridge is that bit, bit further northwards and it will pull that cold air in for longer. This one on the left with the control and operational run, 29 or 56.9%. More low pressure towards Greenland and northern Canada, so it will be more of a transient northerly wind, so maybe a day or two, whereas the one on, on the right may be lasting a little bit longer than a couple of days. Um, so yeah, looking really quite cold, potentially with this northwesterly wind. Beyond that, you can see the, um, the low pressure moving away, um, and then we sort of have a split as we end the runs. Now we've got 19, 37.3% with that low pressure tumbling in from the northwest. Still higher pressure towards northeast Canada, which means it for more of a northwest alignment. Again, it doesn't look like a northwest alignment, it looks more of a westerly alignment on this chart. But if you actually follow the sort of the spherical pattern of the Earth, we are that is a northwest direction. Um, it's just because of the way this chart it shows is coming direct from the left, where actually this is part of the northwest. This part of northern Canada is actually the same. Um, latitude as the UK, um, which is um, quite weird to see on, the, on a map, but that that's the that that is what the reality is. So sometimes I know some people say, "Oh, it's westerly wind." Well, actually, it is a northwesterly wind. It's just the way the charts are formatted. Now we have a look at nineteen runs or nineteen ensemble runs or thirty-seven point three percent. This would be really quite cold. I must say, it doesn't look like a classic blocked pattern. But we are at the start of February. Uh, end of January, start of February, where it's sort of, as I said for the last week or two, we're at the peak of winter. This sort of month from early January until sort of mid-February, that sort of four-week uh, sort of area um, is where the air to, the, uh, to our north over the Arctic is at its coldest. So we get any wind in from the north, whether it's northwesterly, northerly, northeasterly, it's going to be bitterly cold. It's going to be chilly. It's going to be potentially snowworthy. So even though this chart doesn't look phenomenal, 
We've got higher pressure out than all that lands it. You see the jet stream very much is more disrupted. You see all these lines wiggling all over the place, not showing a flat jet stream um, like the, uh, the charts on the left, where you see they're more all streamlined together, showing that jet stream is coming in from one direction. This is all over the place, bit more application, bit of high pressure disturbing this. Not a massive block, but a bit of high pressure disturbing this, meaning the flow is generally coming in from the north. And of course, you see these small little um, kinks in the uh, in the lines here. That's a little low pressure system essentially developing, and that's where we could see slider lows. So it's a, not a classic colder spell, but 37.3% have quite a chilly outcome. Really quite cold with that northerly wind and potentially sliding low pressure systems. The weather fronts coming into that colder air. It could be very messy but wintry scenario again. It's only got 37.3% right at the end of the run, so I wouldn't say it's guaranteed at this stage. But it just shows you, even with this reasonably positive AO over the next week or two, um, and a lot of uh, power up in the jet stream, because we have that high pressure try still trying to ridge up from the Atlantic, it could give us some interestingly um, quite cold uh, patterns. Now, if we f uh, lastly look at the one to the right, you see high pressure actually dominates once again that uh, cold air is locked back into northern Canada, and that's something similar we have now with low pressure to our north, high pressure over the top of the UK, so reverting really to what we have now. Now if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, now if we do start actually at London, because it hasn't fully come out yet, it's only gone out to about the 4th of February, so it's only gone out to day 12, we'll have a look at the 6th as it goes all the way out to the end of the run, but you can see generally mild over the next week, but of course the next sort of 5 days or so, it's going to be still chilly, especially in the south, with more of an inversion towards the centre of the high. Further northwards, we can see more rain and cloud push in. Then we see that big, big and milder sector moving around day seven, day eight. A bit delayed on some of the ensemble runs. There is a bit of uncertainty, of course, um, as these low pressure systems haven't even formed yet. So it's very difficult to say how big that milder sector will be. But most of the ensemble members are going for that. And then we see a big drop. A lot of uncertainty, but the majority are going below average, down to so minus three, minus four degrees at of THPA. Some going much, much colder. See, the operational run goes much colder for a period of time, and precipitation does increase. Now, if we do have a look at the 6 Z run, you can see that very similar. Um, not too different to the 12Z, of course, and it stays pretty cold all the way to around the 7th of February. The GFS operational run for the 6Z was one of the coldest, and it showed what we saw in that Eastern DF ensembles right at the end, that sort of blocked pattern. That's what the GFS operational run went for um, um, on the 6Z. Not a massive sort of classic blocking spell, but it's blocked enough, high pressure's there enough um, towards uh, the middle of the Atlantic, towards Iceland, to make it sustained. Uh, colder keep that colder air over the top of the uk quite unsettled though that's one thing that does look pretty certain it's going to be coming more unsettled air masses are going to be the real big thing we've got to decipher one thing we also need to check and keep an eye on is the sea level pressure um after the six edge you can see generally trending lower but quite up and down so some keeping that higher pressure around more in the south others not so there is a lot of uncertainty around at this stage but it definitely does look like it will be chilly and westerly and finally for london have a look at the g point because that is very important to see where the air mass come from you can see a big mild sector here so south to southwesting winds g point getting up to six seven degrees and then it plunges to around freezing or below freezing air masses coming in from the north or northwest now if we do have a look at glasgow uh, if we do first have a look at the 12Z, 850 HPA temperature and precipitation. You can see really quite chilly getting down to minus 5 at 50 HPA in the longer term after the big mild sector. A lot of precipitation around. And of course, if you look at the new snow depth spikes, significant amount of snow depth spikes from around the 31st of January onwards. So there could be a lot of wintriness around. Again, I don't think it will be sustained wintriness. There is a scenario that goes for that. But the highest chance is it will be on and off colder weather. Because if we, again, if we have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see a lot of up and down, a lot of scatter. Some going down to sort of two or three degrees in the day. Some even going below that. Others getting up to eight or nine degrees. So it very much will depend on the timings of cold and mild sectors, how big the mild sectors are. Um, that's really going to uh, change the outcome of this. And of course, if we have a look at the dew points, once again, dropping to around freezing or colder than that. And again, sea level pressure even lower than London. Some going really deep. The operation run going really, really deep there um, for the 2nd of February. So yeah, very interesting conditions coming up for the next couple of weeks. Much more lively weather. And a lot of people will be excited to have something a little bit more different than higher pressure. Although I think perhaps in a week or two's time, some people may be thinking, oh, I'd love that high pressure, that sunny, frosty high pressure back. 
but it's going to be going much more unsettled and potentially more wintry as well, especially further northwards but we can't rule it out in the south and of course if we do see that slightly more blocked pattern coming slightly more application in the jet stream that high pressure winning out we could be seeing potentially um maybe some wintry weather for more widespread areas i wouldn't underestimate the high pressure at this stage as we have had it around for a long period of time now so perhaps this high pressure although it has bring some quite mundane patterns over the last couple of weeks it could save some cold weather for the south potentially over the coming weeks but we'll have to see exactly how that does play out now if we do finish up have a look at the precipitation temperature um from the uk net office run we're not going to be seeing anything too exciting in this because high pressure is going to be dominating for the next five days still some precipitation in the north as some weather fronts do try and push in but high pressure is generally going to hold it off Quite a lot of cloud around it, though, over the next couple of days. Through Sunday, we're going to see some precipitation trying to push into the north. Maybe snow over the higher ground, but generally it's going to fizzle out and just be an area of cloud. And again, precipitation trying to push in, but not quite making its way. Before actually, right at the end of the run, we do start to see the first proper low pressure system move in from the northwest. Weather front making much more of an inroad into the UK, spreading southwards through Thursday. Still got high pressure hanging on in the south, just the south of this weather front is still in the higher pressure. You can see much more chilly, um, uh, more unsettled, lively air mass coming in from the northwest. So Thursday on the latest UK message was running sort of the flipping uh, time, Wednesday into Thursday, for low pressure to be taking over. Now, if we do have a look at the max temperature, it's going to be quite up, up and down over the next couple of days because of the cloud. The cloud really is going to decide what those temperatures will be. You can see where we didn't see cloud this morning, we saw temperatures below freezing, where we did see cloud, three or four degrees. Now, today's been quite a chilly day between five, seven degrees. So, uh, what well, a few areas, actually, eight or nine degrees. So, uh, around average for many, slightly above, slightly below, depending on exact uh, positioning. Through tonight, potentially a frost in the west, but widely 3, 4, 5 degrees, so nothing too cold. And Sunday in the day, again, 5 to 8 degrees around average, maybe a touch below, a touch above in a few spots. Sunday night, chilly across central areas. Uh, and then again, Monday's going to be quite a cold day, actually, 4 or 5 degrees, so a bit more of an inversion going there. A bit further northwards to a milder air, 7, 8 degrees. And then Tuesday, we can see another frost. Again, you can see it's very localised, all where that cloud breaks. Where the cloud holds on, 3 or 4 degrees, where the cloud breaks, freezing tuesday can another be another chilly day three four degrees maybe even two degrees in the far south similar conditions to over the scottish highlands mild air actually over in the north of england wednesday night maybe the last um, or tuesday night the last frost we may see for a period of time or widespread frost in the central england for wednesday afternoon still really cold two three four degrees real quite cold inversion and then thursday we start to see northwestly airflow come in again if we see a cold air mass we will start to see frosts once again but this sort of inversion frost that we've been seeing where the air mass is actually quite mild we won't be seeing that uh, at least for a while because i don't think high pressure is going to be sort of sitting over the top of the uk at least or well, after sort of wednesday thursday this coming week i don't think it's going to be sitting over the uk for at least a week after that so definitely look like weather is going to be livening up over the next couple of weeks we're going to be seeing a lot more low pressure around a lot more precipitation which some of that could fall to snow especially over northern england over the higher ground in scotland um, and potentially even to low-lying areas as well if we do get that um, sort of cold air mass through the whole country sort of and, and sort of it holding on as well a lot of uncertainty in the longer term definitely does look like northwestly dominated sort of conditions but that high pressure that we've had over the top of the uk is being really stubborn and that may be a little bit of a savior if you're looking for some cold weather because that is going to try and ridge northwards and it's going to create some application in this very strong jet stream which could mean we could see air masses hold on long enough to see some wintriness even um, to low-lying areas so i have to keep an eye really what happens over the next few weeks at least it's looking a lot more interesting um as we end January and start February. So yeah, hopefully you're looking forward to a little bit of a change. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.